This mini series is brought to you by Harding, a friend of the Automation Ladies and the Industrial Connectivity Team on a mission to prove that every connection matters. Are you going to IMTS this year in Chicago? Well, Nikki is, and so is Harding. If you're walking around the IMTS show floor this year, you'll notice Harding connectors powering robots of all shapes and sizes and moving data through automation machinery. You can stop by their in-booth demo truck experience and get hands-on with Harding's famous modular connectors. And you can even customize your own, just like Lego. For a little more information about Harding, check out our episode from season three with Ed and Goda, where we talk a little bit more about why the heck should we care about connectors. As always, we encourage you to connect with and get to know the people in our community. So go ahead and look up Ed, Goda, or Amanda Marks from Harding on LinkedIn and connect with them. You can also learn more about Harding at harding.com. This mini series will run until September during IMTS. And then after IMTS, we will kick off season five of Automation Ladies, the audio podcast, with some pre recordings that we have in backlog. You can look for our LinkedIn lives starting in October with our live recap from the AHTD fall meeting in Bellevue, Washington. And we should be doing regular LinkedIn lives on Thursdays at 3 p.m. Central starting in October 2024. Finally, follow us, connect with us. Please write us a review on your favorite podcast platform and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Automation Ladies, if you haven't seen our content over there yet. And with that, welcome to our new mini series with Harding. I hope you guys are having a great summer. I mean, you know, it's it seems like with Del Cossi focusing on software defined automation or software world, right? He saw in his keynote, he said, look beyond the buzzwords and try to see exactly when somebody says digital threat, what does that mean? And, um, I think there's still a lot of, you know, not to take back from the hardware, there's still a lot of use cases and a lot of um, I, hardware is basically going to be here for a long time. It's here to stay. And really what the goal of that was to say that software is there to help augment some of the engineering tasks and mm -hmm. operational tasks for the hardware but and the design tasks, right? But the hardware is not going anywhere. You're still going to need solutions for connectivity, right? right. Um, you're still going to need solutions for mechanical engineering, mechanical connectivity, um, and things like that, especially when we're talking about connecting all assets, when we're talking about getting data from machinery, getting... Uh, sensor data from our lines and from our production machines. How do we get all that back to a control system, control cabinets? How do we get that back to higher level systems and things like that? So I think there's still actually a lot of parallels between like what what's happening now in industry from the automation side, from the control side, to even just simple things like bulkhead connectors go a long way for creating that kind of end to end solution for a lot of customers. Right. And absolutely, and, and that's one of the things that we think about. I think as we develop and refine and and, and uh, uh, you know come up with new connectors, is that these are going to be used in your applications in the field, uh, mm -hmm. and these are going to be used for a long time. And one of the things I would imagine, like, what's a typical product life cycle for you? It's it's got to be thirty years, or <laughs> right? Yeah, right. It's got to be a long time, right? And so you know, the connector needs to be able to support that. Of course. Or if there is a problem with, with the connector, you know, heaven forbid, uh, you need to be able to quickly uh, swap it out or change it, identify it, change it, and, and swap it out. Yeah. So those are kind of some of the areas that we focus on in terms of designing our product to support what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that, that goes to point out, you, you brought up the life cycle thing, and I said 30 years, but I think the equipment that a lot of these components get installed on, I mean, you'll find them like working a lot longer than 30 years. I mean, I was talking to so many people this week that they've had, you know, systems with like Siemens S5 controllers. And if you don't know anything about Siemens S5, they were obsoleted 30 years ago. And they're still <laughs> running today, 30 years later. Yeah. And it was a new product 60 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, that's that's pretty crazy right. that you know they've got machines that have are 40 50 60 years old still out there producing you know 2500 parts a day or or whatever you know their production goals are so to that point there's a lot of mechanical failures that happen throughout that life cycle right, right. forget the automation side 
there's a lot of mechanical things that need to be replaced and retrofitted so that way those machines can stay up and running. And uh, that's exactly what you were just talking about just now. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, and let's talk about a product that's been in the field for 30 years or 60 years. Like maybe you want to replace a module on that to bring it mm. a little bit more into this era, or maybe it needs new yeah. functionality. And, and that's something that the connector can support too. Uh, like we talked about the modular connectors and we can literally have a, a dummy spot <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's available for in the future. Now you need to use this newfangled technology, yeah. whether it's single pair ethernet or whatever you want to talk about. And we're helping to future proof your product so that it can mm -hmm. be in the field for another 30 years beyond. Yep. Uh, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm, I mean, that's a good example, actually. I mean, look at PLCs 30 years ago, almost all of them, even some, some PLCs today that are modern have serial connections as a primary method of collecting data. And then now what I would consider at least minimum requirements for modern is an ethernet port right. for connection, right? How do you go from like a shielded serial cable to like an ethernet jack or something like that, being able to kind of um, adapt your something you wouldn't think about when you're just modernizing a PLC is those other things. That's right. And, and again, this is the way that we think as well. And when you think about, you know, Ethernet and RJ45, a product that was designed for office space and, you know, mm -hmm. really wasn't designed to be used in some of the environments that yeah. they were using. Um, you know, we have a product like our IX Industrial, which is basically a ruggedized industrial version of the mm -hmm. RJ45 that's much smaller. Yep. Um, and so, you know, I've seen application use cases where you take maybe four channels of Ethernet, four channels of RJ45, and you replace them with eight channels or, or more of, of this new connector. Yep. And they're designed for the shotgun vibration, you know, for more rugged environments. Wow. Yeah. Because one of the things I wanted to ask you, one of the trends that we hear is about more and more decentralization. So instead yep. of having Absolutely. centralized control. Yeah. So I imagine you... <laughs> That's something that informs your products too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, decentralized automation is a big trend as well. So um, whether that's, especially on the modernization side, moving things from hardwired IO to like distributed IO and networked IO, things like that, that's definitely a big trend. We're also seeing a lot more trends to even further decentralization when we talk about like new technology like IO link. Okay. So now you're not just going decentralized from the PLC to your remote I.O. rack. Now you're going from the remote I.O. rack to the sensor, right? And bringing the I.O. closer to the sensor. And now you've got machine mount I.O., things like that. So the technology is changing so much where it's like the intelligence is getting closer and closer to the sensor and closer and closer to the machine. And kind of makes you wonder, like, what's happening with the PLC? What's the PLC good for anyway, anymore if the, <laughs> all the intelligence is right there next to the you know, a simple proc switch or a simple, simple temperature sensor, but that's where, you know, the PLCs and take over those more advanced functions, uh, edge computing, things like that. Yeah, it'll be a gateway. The yeah. PLC will just be a gateway. <laughs> just a gateway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, I'm going to jump in here and say some of our friends that deal more with the networking and stuff are saying that, you know, some of their startup e customers are more so looking at like connecting each individual device just to the network, right? And, um, they want to get, they want to do more virtual PLCs. They mm -hmm. want to be less hardware specific dependent. Sure. Um, also to kind of match their talent, which is often more from the software in, you mm -hmm. know, world rather than the old school. The reason we program in ladder logic is because it doesn't come from a software background. It comes from, you know, really logic, right? So yeah. we have to bridge that gap with existing facilities because they have these 30 year old PLCs and they're also trying to maybe bring up a digital twin, yep. which is where bringing those old assets on, getting the data out from existing assets in a streamlined way is super important. So we've been talking about digital twin for the last, like, yep. I don't know how long. And we're finally, I think, getting close to a point where it's more feasible to adopt. I think the keynote this morning really spoke mm -hmm. to that. What was it? The speed of... Uh, relevancy. relevancy. Adapt your technology at the speed of, faster than the speed of relevancy. Exactly. And you need to be able to get things in production and see them actually work and... Mm -hmm. You know, the, oh my gosh, the renderings from that. And I saw them at uh, GP, uh, GTC, GTC yep. earlier this year, and I was blown away. Um, I had to take a video of that. But like the fact that that is a whole digital twin that you yeah. set up on the factory, 
the fact that it looked so real, um, A, that was just a really cool way to see how your partner ecosystem mm -hmm. is really like you've realized, okay, Siemens isn't going to need to invent the rendering. It's actually an open source project from Pixar that NVIDIA has picked up that everybody's collaborating on. It's called OpenUSD. OpenUSD. Yeah. Um, but that is, you know, part of what's enabling this amazing digital twin technology that you guys have. Yep. Uh, plenty of other tech partnerships that we saw up there. So I really see and feel that Siemens is kind of opening up and realizing, hey, partner ecosystem is a way to grow. And the soft PLC, or not not the soft PLC, because that's a different thing from the virtual PLC, yep. right? The virtual PLC is a way to move into that kind of hardware agnostic mm -hmm. option, at least. Yep. Having the redundancy, like you were saying about the connector, having a dummy spot open. It's like you can have a whole other PLC sitting and waiting yep. on a virtual PLC to be spun up in an instance if you need, if your PLC is down, instead of now having to order a piece of hardware that you have to wait six weeks for. These types of developments are really exciting to me on a conceptual yep. level. Are you seeing a lot of that adopted already? Or are we still talking, you know, yeah. that this sounds like a great thing for the future? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, that's one of the use cases you could think about for virtual PLC, but even soft PLCs running on on IPCs as well, industrial PCs, everything is kind of moving towards more PC-based automation is what I'm seeing for a number of reasons, performance, but also that decentralization piece is... A lot of people aren't necessarily requiring the I.O. to be close to the controller anymore. So when we talk about the use case of virtual PLC, we're putting that into our industrial edge computing ecosystem. So now you're moving it closer to the IT cabinets. So okay. out of the control cabinets into the IT cabinets. and But you still need sensor data. Right. You still need I.O. And that's where that decentralized part that we were just talking about comes into play where you have, you still might have, move your controller away from the factory floor, but you still got your I.O. that you got to bring back to your controller to make, be able to make those decisions, right? So those long Ethernet runs, maybe wireless could be a way to change things. But, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of existing brownfields, you heard Dell mention that greenfields are great. You get a clean sheet of paper, but brownfields are what keep America running, right? Yep. This is what mm -hmm. is the heart of America's existing manufacturing. And how do we modernize those and bring those to a level where we can move our automation to the next level. So we have to think about solutions for existing installations, right? And a lot of those factories maybe have existing infrastructure in place. And that's how we need to think about those decentralized solutions. And the good thing is, you know, when it comes to virtualization, virtual PLCs or soft PLCs or virtualized edge computing, all those things, those are scalable regardless of greenfield, brownfield, but it's the hardware that comes a little bit more complicated conversations where you need to talk with the customer a little bit about, find out, you know, what's existing, what kind of downtime can we expect, if any, Yeah. right? And those conversations take a while to kind of mitigate sometimes. So if you're listening to this and you are either interested in learning about Siemens or you have some thoughts swirling and you have questions, um, Luis is a great person. He's easy to get a hold of on LinkedIn. He can point you in the right direction, connect you to the right person to talk to. We have a lot of people that we know that, you know, they work on certain things because it's been what's in the plants that they work or it's, you know, more readily available. Um, we really want to encourage people to at least be aware and if not be a little bit proficient in other platforms. So we're huge, you know, advocates of open learning availability of stuff so we you know siemens is pretty easy to get a hold of for trying and training things yep. testing stuff out uh so come to any of us if you have you know thoughts ideas questions siemens is very approachable but they're very big so it can be hard to know who to talk to depending on what it is that you need or what um and so for us it's like if you know me i can make a personal recommendation introduction yep. That goes a long way sometimes. We all get thousands of emails, cold pitches, who is who, and being able to say like, hey, I know Luis, you should know Ed, right? Yeah. That goes a long way in deciding whether or not you want to spend time talking to somebody. Yeah. And we're not here to sell any platform or product or brand, but we know good people that we can recommend that you talk to, and Luis is one of them. And I really For wanted sure. to make sure that Luis knew Ed is the other guy. When you want to talk about connectors know, I, to anyone, now you know Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel an instant connection just talking to him before we sat down. It was really yeah. good. Yeah. Yep. 
And I think that's the power of those are the types of people we'd like to talk to. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've kind of self-selected by being in our uh -oh. orbit a little bit. Um, <laughs> we all like to collaborate and we like to learn from each other. And yep. yeah, so thank you very much for coming by to have this conversation. Ali, Ed, do you guys have any closing remarks or questions for Luis? I know everybody's like headed off to the next happy hour here. It's almost <laughs> the end of day two. It's been uh, a long day. And it's day. been a whirlwind and a long day, right? <laughs> no, I just wanted to say again, thank, thank you, Luis. It's great to meet you. And, and thank you guys again. I just can't say it enough. It's, it's, you, you bring, I'm not going to call myself a good person, but you, you bring good people together and, and, and really appreciate You're definitely appreciate a good person, it. I can tell. Oh, okay, you can say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> we may not know all the solutions or all the technologies, but I think we are pretty good at spotting people that, I don't know, are kind and collaborative. Yeah. Those are some of the top things I look Our for, vibes. people that I want to spend time with in business or in personal life. I used to be in, in uh, field sales which I learned a lot and I highly recommend anybody in the industry take some time to work out in the field. But I was in a sales position and I only sold one brand and I had to spend a lot of time with people that I didn't necessarily want to if I had a choice otherwise. Now I'm a little older, a little wiser, a little bit better connected. I you know, have options in my career due to the fact that I've learned a lot and I know a lot of people. And then you get the luxury of choosing a little bit who you spend your time with. And this is a vast industry. And there are technologies for everything. There are options for everything. Um, and so being able to choose to work with great technologies and good people, that's, I think, the best you can hope for. So yeah. thank you, everyone. Uh, if We hope to see you later at the Manufacturing Happy Hour party. We'll see. And we'll see. at the very least, we'll be coming by uh, Siemens. And then I know you guys are doing some content with Dave and Vlad, our friends over at the Manufacturing Hub, oh, cool. right? Yeah, so they're probably there for, for another 10 minutes. Show. Yep. Very cool. This will be like put out after the show as well. So I just want to give a shout out to them. They're going to have a lot more coverage of specifically Siemens technology in the booth coming from this show than we are. Um, so yeah. check them out on their channels if you want to see what was actually going on uh, in the Siemens booth. So thanks, yeah, check out Industrial Copilot. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> yeah, we'll be sharing. Amazing. I actually have some content from the keynote this morning. The Wi-Fi here is terrible, so I, yeah, could, I can't is. upload it real time pretty rough but uh, <laughs> definitely appreciate you guys having me on and, and very great to meet you and good good to hang out